So, hi. Uh, this talk is going to be about monitoring a converging infrastructure uh, containing and running together containers and virtual machines together. The main focus here will be about metric collection because I can't cover all of it. Uh, so let's start. My name is Yanir Quinn. I'm working in Red Hat since 2016 and I'm a part of the Kubert team. So we'll briefly talk about Kubernetes and metrics collection in Kubernetes, uh, the main sources, the key sources for metrics collection. We'll see how it comes together with Formitius to provide us a full monitoring pipeline solution. Having covered that, we want to throw in virtual machines into the mix. So we'll briefly look what Qvert is that brings virtual machines on top of Kubernetes. See from past experience what we have collected uh, for virtu virtual machine and matrices and see how it all comes together eventually. So we have Kubernetes as a start, uh, as our container-centric uh, platform orchestrator that orchestrates computational uh, nodes and pods, network, storage database, all of components that you would like to monitor in your system. And the second uh, building block here is Prometheus. Prometheus was, is, was originated in SoundCloud in 2012. Now it's an open source community. Uh, it's a monitoring and alert, alerting system. It's a multi-dimensional label-based uh, model. <coughs> it, uh, based, it's based on a time series uh, data, which uh, is comprised of uh, key, key value uh, pairs. Uh, it has a very strong uh, query language, PromQL, that analyzes that time series data. And you can see it really integrates uh, in a natively almost way with Kubernetes. Some of the Kubernetes components already has integrated or have integrated with Prometheus. A quick view on the model. So in the middle we have the Prometheus server that scrapes and pulls data through HTTP endpoints into its server, collects and aggregates that data. On that data, you can perform a PromQL series in order to uh, analyze it and move it on, aggregate the data, and even uh, create the alerting. Alerting are pushed to the alert manager and to its clients. And you can also use Grafana or other API clients to visualize that data. But again, our main focus here is matrix collection. So because Prometheus needs as much as auto-discovery as it can get, uh, it needs to scrape data, pull data from metrics endpoints, HTTP endpoints. For that, uh, it's very easy to integrate with Kubernetes since it ex uh, exposes these endpoints on, uh, on APIs on HTTP. Uh, as I said, some of the matrices are already exposed through the metrics endpoint, and some will need to be added and collected. So I'll go over two or three sources of matrices in Kubernetes, uh, in the Kubernetes uh, architecture. The first one of them is the uh, host matrix, Kubernetes nodes. So Kubernetes nodes didn't have uh, natively ex exposing uh, metrics endpoints. For that, we, they had to write an exporter. An exporter is, a Prometheus exporter, is a service that uh, collects your, all of your data from your node, for that example, or any other data you need to expose from your application, etc. Exposes them on the Prometheus uh, endpoint, uh, so Prometheus can come, discover it, and scrape them out. So node, node metrics uh, are scraped from PROC. And you get uh, all your familiar uh, host uh, statistics such as Node CPU. Node CPU, for example, has like 15 dimensions of uh, metrics type for CPU, like idle, IO8. But if you want to analyze, for example, how much time the CPU is spent uh, on a node or per CPU core, you can perform a PromQL query and remove these and get your Node CPU statistics. Other are, of course, memory, memory available. You can also perform queries against uh, the total memory left. There are more advanced matrix uh, than only node statistic. If you look at it in a Kubernetes uh, kind of way, for that we have another component called cube state matrix, which looks at it from the Kubernetes way and also takes into account memory limits and uh, CPU limits. Moving on. so. 
in our host we have containers and containers metrics are exposed through C Advisor. C, C Advisor provides you data about uh, containers uh, runtimes such as Docker or Cryo. It is embedded in the kubelet so kubelet natively exposes uh, an endpoint to to slash metrics which is a port for, for Prometheus so we don't need to add additional uh, exporters to collect that data. So you analyze these metrics and resource users, usage and expose them on the metrics. These are what you also call uh, core metrics for each container. And again, much like Node, just in a, just in a container view, you have uh, your original your CPU matrix and memory. Uh, memory, actually, this matrix is very advanced. It's, it's a, in the Linux kernel, it gives you actually the exact uh, memory usage you have left taking into consideration all other uh, matrix you have, uh, in, you have under your container. Uh, and of course, memory transmission. Another part, uh, let's look a bit on the orchestration uh, parts. Uh, so I'll talk about only API server here. So because the API server is the front end for Kubernetes cluster and gets all the calls and relays them to etcd and controller, it's an important uh, component to monitor. Uh, for example, you want to create a pod or uh, run a deployment. Uh, you want to see, and it's all done through REST API calls, so you want to see you want to see the request rates and latency. How long did it take for me to complete uh, a request to create uh, such a deployment, for example? Or how long did it take? Even counting the amount of that. And let's say you want to create a thousand deployments on your cluster. When you create a deployment, it goes on to work use for controllers. It accumulates in cache the, the request for creating objects or deployments and if your queue gets accumulated and gets stuck, it's, it's, you want to detect that bottleneck. So it's a very important aspect uh, to monitor. <coughs> because Kubernetes is, is based on Go, so you get out of the box Golang statistics, garbage collection, memory, threads, etc. And you also monitor the server's process itself. So, so that was only one component. Of course, you have metrics collection for scheduler, the Kubernetes controller, etcd, but I won't get into those. Now, there's a, uh, an add-on called cube state metrics. This add-on you need to deploy as an instance, only one instance in your Kubernetes cluster, and it's more, it relates more to not health or utilization, it focuses on counts and status. So, for example, you want to check uh, what, what status is your pod, pod in, uh, in terms of scheduling or health, uh, not health, in the phase it's in. Uh, you have the concept of CPU limits or memory limits. We won't allow uh, a pod to run containers without any boundaries. We don't want to exhaust all of them. So we want to check statistics, how how much memory you have in according to your limits or, prefer, or provide even more advanced uh, queries on these statistics. There are a thousand of examples in cube state metrics. Uh, I'll talk about, for example, uh, <coughs> replica sets. You have defined a replica set. Replica set, you want to run a number of deployments on your cluster and you want to make sure that uh, these number of deployments are, deployments are running in cluster. So you want to see if they are not available, how many are there in the cluster, and so on. So that was very briefly about Kubernetes components and sources for metrics collection. And now we want to add virtual machines into the mix. So Qbert. Qbert comes to close the gap between virtual machines and containers under the same, under the same hood, under con converged infrastructure. We want to run also virtual machines, also containers in, our, in the same platform. And we ask ourselves why. <laughs> so uh, this is a great allegory. Containers are considered to be lightweight. They're fast to bring up. Uh, they're natively. Uh, they have native pr performance, but virtual machines with their uh, bulky, heavy utility hard hardware belt are not going uh, to disappear. We will have them in the next five or ten years at, at least, and we will still want to maintain them. Uh, 
You can look at that example for mainframes. It's taken a long time to phase out mainframes. They're still, they still even exist. So, so what can I do with it? First of all, we want to bring the legacy. We want to run it under the same hood. We don't want to maintain two infrastructures. Uh, we don't want to maintain two infrastructures. So we're going to mix and match uh, and add virtualization on top of Kubernetes. Thus also uh, getting all the Kubernetes advantages, such as scheduling, uh, the storage, networking, with some uh, addition and fixes to manage to do that. We are also in the use of Kubert and running virtual machines on the, on a Kubernetes cluster. We can also enable uh, and run any OS we want to run on, on top of Kubernetes. <coughs> so this is Kubernetes. And we added to the mix some virtual machine components. Again, I won't go too deep into the components. So on the left, you can see the node. In the node, we have a pod which runs a VM. Virtual machines runs on pod. Yeah, and you have also side uh, containers on that pod to enable virtualization, such as uh, LiveVirt. <coughs> you, you also have key components, very resembling Kubernetes components, like Virt API, same as API server, to create uh, your virtual <coughs> machine CRDs, pass them on to UTCD, having the Virt controller identifying that, creating a pod, running a virtual machine on a pod, and also scheduling it to a node. Once it's scheduled to a node, the virtual machine uh, gets the node assigned, and then all the handling of the VM life cycles moves to the virtual handler. Again, on top of the, the fork. So, of course, I added something new. I have monitoring on Kubernetes. I want to also monitor virtual machines. So I want to figure out first what to collect. So a quick example from uh, pure virtualization, Overt. Overt uses CollectD to collect its matrixes. So, uh, it has powerful plugins, a lot of plugins you can add to, to it and run it. it. It gets you host statistics, database statistics, eng engine stats, and more, more important for us right now, it's virtual machine statistics. So for virtual machine statistics, <coughs> we have a Virt plugin. Virt plugin communicates with LiveVirt, and LiveVirt gives us the information about the virtual machine. So of course, you are introducing here some new aspects. Not necessarily all will be monitored and adapted to Kubernetes, but virtual CPU. How much time my guest was running on a CPU? Uh, memory, some specific related memory uh, matrix like ballooning or uh, overcommitment, memory management uh, matrices. Uh, disk reads and write, flashes for disks, for disks, and also network aspects. Some of them might merge from the benefit of Kubernetes, but we might want to adjust them to virtual machines, but some will need to add. <laughs> One strong example I can give you that uh, Kubernetes has a scheduler, a very strong scheduler, but it doesn't have like 80 uh, scheduling policies we have in virtualization. And we want, and we'll probably add these policy also to the scheduler. So we want to see why our cluster behaves in such scheduling matter, like let's say high availability HA reservation. And we also want to monitor that. Maybe we'll decide in the future to change the scheduling policy. So it's a very important aspect. So we can see some similarities and add in uh, virtual machine statistics. So. Coming back again to Prometheus and Kubernetes, we had our collection, node exporters, cube components, cube state metrics, and of course, we're missing the collection for virtual machine. Virtual machines and cube just came in, so we need to write a custom exporter, very much like node exporter. So for that, we need uh, Prometheus exporters. Uh, writing an exporter can be done in Prometheus client library, for us, it was very easy. It's mainly in Go, so it's very native to write it. So that, <coughs> that exporter will collect your data from the app matrix. It will expose it on a matrix uh, endpoint from Kubernetes slash matrix, and it will be available to scrape by a Prometheus server. So we'll add custom exporters for our virtual machines. 
and we'll now start pulling uh, other components. So we have the Kubernetes components and now we talked about virtual machine matrix. We talked about components for, for orchestrating the virtual machines such as the Virt API, the Virt controller. We have also processes that run inside a pod, as I said, for uh, enabling virtualization, such as Libert and QEMU. I want to complete the picture in a small note uh, about the whole cluster. Uh, in order to deploy Prometheus servers on a Kubernetes cluster, we can uh, use very easily Prometheus operator. It's from, it, it's, it has two main functionalities. It's first of all to deploy and manage the Prometheus server. You get also alert manager. You can get also um, uh, node exporters or other exporters you may define. And also important to watch your components on the cluster. So we added virtual machine and in order to watch them with a Prometheus operator, we have an entity called a service monitor. You define the port, you define the objects you want to monitor you add uh, the corresponding labels for that matter. And if you now create new CRDs, it detects that and starts scraping these, uh, these metrics also for virtual machines in our case. So, qubit metrics. So, I'm taking you back. So we looked at uh, metrics we collect for Kubernetes. Some came from the kubelet, <coughs> some came from Node, and components, etcd, scheduler, and controllers. And now add into our mix. We add the Virt controller, and we have the Virt API and the Virt handler. Uh, and, I, and I told you, it's very resembling the Kubernetes uh, components. So if we look back at the API server, we talked about it's uh, communicating with controller work use and performance. It's, it has native statistic about Golang, and it also handles the uh, REST API requests and measures them. So, very similar. We have the Virt, uh, Virt controller work use. We want, to, we want to go over that and get statistics about that. We have queue latencies, work duration, uh, number of time, also the caches that comes from Go. Race, REST API calls, again, very similar to the API server. And now I want to focus specifically on virtual machine statistics. So the previous were general uh, components in a Kubernetes cluster. Here you drill down into the virtual machine statistics and matrices. So two major parts. Virtual machine matrix, which we saw uh, how, how and what we collect in OVIRT, in a pure virtualization environment, and processes. So for process service, I'll say it's more for deployment, the developer utility, less for real cluster uh, management and observability. Um, and these processes, for example, are also scraped from PROC, like a node exporter, and we get metrics about them. Okay, so some, some important uh, information about VM metrics. We can see the four pillars of uh, metrics we collected in OVILT, and usually these pillars are repeating themselves in all of the metrics. These are not the only metrics we'll collect, but these, these are the most prominent examples. So, for example, VA, uh, VM CPU or CPU time. I want to see my guest CPU, how much time they used. Memory, for example, you want to create a matrix that is composed for several matrices. How much, uh, how much memory we have on set? How much uh, actual ballooning was left uh, for the VM itself? Uh, RSS, the amount of it, all compiling and coming down to, to completing a collect matrix. And also about uh, network. On the, on the bottom, you can see uh, the pod info matrix, which I talked about uh, processes themselves. And you can see a full form of matrix, uh, how it looks in a Prometheus exposed format. You have the, you have the name of the metric himself, itself, which domain or for our, our matter, what VM does it monitor. You can add a host or other labels 
for that matter also we added the process name and the type of matrix. This applies to all matrix time, all matrix time uh, time series format we want to show here. <coughs> so this is an example how, we, how it will look on a Grafana dashboard. Of course you, you can also use Kibana for that matter or other uh, tools. For a, a very simple example, for a VM running on a pod, is CPU usage and memory usage. Okay, so in conclusion, that was a very fast talk about some, some uh, concepts, but the main take here <coughs> is that we, ha we have Kubernetes and Prometheus. We have this whole platform and framework and solution existing. We have very easy extensibility for that. So for us, by adding a new uh, add-on, Qubit, and virtualization into the mix, monitoring that was kind of native and uh, very supportable. And for us, we got a complete monitoring solution, uh, and it's continuing to grow uh, as we speak. <laughs> Uh, for our convergence infrastructure, infrastructure, but it's, it shouldn't be just only for virtual machine. Everybody can take it for you know, uh, is is himself, and if he adds new components on top of Kubernetes or add-ons or side side application, we can monitor that using the concepts of uh, Prometheus exporters and uh, other many notions. <coughs>